Hi everyone and welcome to uh, Sorting Algorithms Learning Tool and today I'll be talking about quick sort um, which is also known as partition exchange sort. Um, it is an efficient divide and conquer algorithm just like most sort. Um, it is a comparison based algorithm which means it can sort data sets which involves less than relations uh, so that means where a total order is defined. Um, quick sort uh, basically selects an element within the array as a pivot um, and then the algorithm compares the other elements in the list to the pivot and partitions them around the pivot depending um, whether it's less than or greater than the pivot. Um, and then this occurs recursively until the list is sorted so the partitions is then divided into subpartitions, divided further. So without further ado I'll talk about the data structure. So like other sorting algorithms it uses an array data structure which involves a stack. Um, and then the worst case, time complexity is big O n squared. Uh, average case is theta n log n, and then omega n log n. So, uh, as you can see, the only thing that stands out from... And then the space complexity is O log n. So now I'll be talking about the, an example of quick source. So, uh, this is as you can see. This is the input list, and this is treated as just one, uh, one big partition. So, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then this list, a pivot is randomly selected. Uh, a pivot is selected, and it could be random, or it could pick the middle value. Um, you could also select the first or last element, but that might ye that may yield much uh, worse performance. And then that will compare each and in every individual element to this pivot. So seven is greater than four. Um, six is greater than four. Five is greater than four. And then three is smaller than four. Two is smaller than four. And one is smaller than four. And then you have a uh, left. Partition subpartition, which includes the pivot, and then the right subpartition. Uh, you, this, you have to know that this is a subpartition or sublist because QuickSort is in place, so everything you see is just one whole, like this is basically just one, three, two, one, four, seven, six, five. This is just one big whole list, but the, these subpartitions help you divide the elements in your list. So you know which ones are the left and which ones are the right. So there's no extra data structure or memory required. So so what happens next is in recursively each individual list will pick a pivot of their own. So two in this case because we're rounding down from the median value and then this will be six and then uh, we're forming another set of subpartitions so uh, this happens recursively so in parallel so two is bigger than three three is bigger than two so and then four is big and then one is bigger less than two so it goes here and then four is bigger than two and then the pivot goes to left so this will be the left and then this will be the Right, so basically the left contains all the values that's e that's the, the pivot itself and values less than the pivot, so 1. And then the right contains all the values that's bigger than the pivot, so 7, 6, 5 is bigger than 4. Um, and then this happens the same, so it'll be, so each will split into, each subpartition will split into two more subpartitions. And then... That's seven, that 7 is bigger than five, uh, 6, so 7 goes here, to the left, to the right side, and then uh, 5 is less than the, uh, the sublist, less than the pivot, and then the pivot goes after 6. So, as you can see, we form from 2 sub subpartitions to 4 sub subpartitions, and then you can see a 7 only has 1 value, so that's when, when your recursive call, the base case is reached, so that means um, because of array of length 1 or 0, uh, the, the algorithm will stop for that element, so it will not continue further. And then for this, these three cases, it will be 1 as the pivot, 3 as the pivot, and 5 as the pivot. And then 
you can see that one a two is bigger than one. So two goes to the right subpartition and then the pivot goes here. And then same for three and four. Five and six. And then uh, the seventh one is the same. So um this is a this is I see So yeah, um so then the algorithm detects that all of both all of these individual arrays of zero or one. So the algorithm knows that once all the base case is reached, <clears throat> the algorithm stops and the list you can see is sorted. So if we just combine all these individual elements back into one list, but we're just seeing it as separate arrays just for easy visualization in a way. And now, and now I'll be talking about um, this, uh, the code for Quicksort. So I found this really good iterative version of Quicksort on this uh, website. So here's the address. But um, it's actually a really interesting implementation. So here, this website is actually really useful as well because it talks compares recursive and iterative and the advantages and disadvantages. So you should really check it out. Highly recommend it. But um, so in for JavaScript, you can see he uses a stack, and um, so this is the whole quick sort function. So you can see it's very condensed. Uh, he uses a stack. He uses and then he creates a empty sorted list, and then he uses a while loop to replace the recursive calls. So that's the stack length, and then so the stack in a way contains all the elements, and then. Or will contain all the elements, <clears throat> and then you have um, a temporary value that you pop off the stack, and this is the temporary length of the element. So this is the base case, as you can see. So if the length is equal to one, then you push this value onto the sorted list, and that's the first value that is sorted in the way. And then you have a pivot, which this is assigns the pivot. So it tells you, and then he selected as the first value as the pivot. Um, and then you can see there's these are the left and right subpartitions, sub which is <coughs> initialized empty. And then he has this um, this list, and then you can see some errors, which this is just meant to be. Um, uh, are meant to be less than less than sign, so i is less than lt, and then I mean tl. There's no such thing as lt, so you can see some errors there. But uh, um, but yeah, but um, after you adjust this, this code will work. But um, so basically, this for loop goes through the length of your. Of your variable, cool. so you can see that this for loop it leads through the <coughs> array. And then you can see that inside this for loop, um, he starts comparing the temp temporary variable. So this loops. So since this loops through the whole array, it will compare the f each individual element of the array to this pivot. <coughs> and then if this variable is less than the pivot, it will push it to the left subpartition. So and then if else, if the um, variable is bigger than the pivot, it will move to the right partition and then you can see here that it also adds the pivot to the left partition at the end and then both of these will just push it, um, push the right and left two back into the stack and you can see that this this will happen um, when the stack length is defined so uh, once undefined this whole loop will stop. This is, gives you a rough idea of what each line in the code does for quicksort.
So now, <coughs> so now we talk about the advantages and disadvantages of quick sort. <coughs> um, quick sort, even though it's got O n squared. <coughs> Worst case, <coughs> it is able to outperform merge sort <coughs> and heap sort because of the efficiency in the inner loop. The nested loops, the inner loop is more is very efficient, so that's why quick sort is more efficient than most on heap sort. Oh, there. This is the also the reason why quick sort is widely used. Um, and in practice, it's it has shown that it's two to three times faster than most sort and heap sort as well. Um. Uh, quick sort performs best when the middle element is selected as a pivot which runs O, uh, not O, so which runs omega n log n time and <clears throat> and also random randomizing the input list. Is also benefits. Uh, it works in place, so no extra storage or memory uh, storage or anything like that is required, uh, and that's def that's a disadvantage of burst sort. That's one of the reasons why they differ. Uh, quick sort is not stable. It's a disadvantage. But there are ways to make quicksort more stable. <clears throat> but that might, but you might see some trade off in terms of performance or in terms of uh, whether it's in place or out of place. And then lastly, the worst scenario for quicksort is when uh, the first or last element is selected as the pivot selected as the pivot on the near sorted array um, and that's the pretty much the worst case scenario and then this is the best case scenario But yes, um, that's all I have for today in terms of quick sort. Thank you very much for watching. Actually, one more thing I would like to add is <clears throat> the runtime of quick sort. It is given by the formula Tn equals Tk <clears throat> plus Tn minus k minus 1 plus theta n. <clears throat> um, and n is obviously the number of elements in the list. K is the number of elements less than the pivot. And then this part is basically the time taken to partition the data into subpartitions. So you can see that this is pretty much how to calculate the runtime for the algorithm. <clears throat>